The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me. And it doesn't matter where me is as long as you are here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Kind of a flat day. And NASDAQ down five points. S&P up three and a half points. Russell's up seven uh, crude, uh, yeah, meandering around the $88 level. Gold was a little higher earlier, $5 higher at 801 Um, so what do we have? Well, I think we got a little bit, uh, of, uh, a hangover coming back. And that was everybody flooding back into the, probably the most oversold and, uh, and, uh, highly shorted market that we've had since 2016. And uh, it's just uh, one of those things where you go, well, maybe a little bit too much, too fast. It could be part of it. The other part could be whether or not we're in a bear market or not. Uh, this is the way that bear markets work. You have huge retracements. Uh, as I said before, three, st uh, three steps back, two steps forward kind of stuff. Uh, you never know, but this uh, this could be the little point where we start uh, everybody believing that it's back to normal, and then we head back lower. The the reason I think about or think of it that way is generally markets go up uh, the stairs, and these things went up the escalator fairly quickly, and you know, just. A little, just uh, everybody piling in at once always makes me a little nervous. Anyway, uh, we're kind of uh, meandering around unchanged for most of the uh, big indexes. We've got uh, a lot of earnings coming this week. Uh, AMD after the bell tonight. Um, that's a company that's not restricted by demand, but only su uh, uh, the supply they can uh, create. So real hard to figure out how all those guys are going to be doing. They came off the lows fairly well, hovering around 115 on the day. Uh, and, uh, you know, what else we can say is just, you know, we look at the rest of uh, what's out there for earnings. Uh, to, to, let's go back out here and say uh, PayPal, Google tonight. Hard to tell on Google, but we shall see. Uh, General Motors, Government Motors, uh, Starbucks, uh, Gilead, Electronic Arts. Uh, and then, of course, in the morning, we look at D.H. Horton, Waste Management, Ferrari, uh, Novartis, Boston Scientific, Capri Holdings, Humana. So healthcare, biotech, kind of strong, uh, the bad part of this week. Uh, so it's kind of a little bit of hurry up and wait um, on the earnings that we had last night and this morning. Uh, the big news is probably not big at all, and that is UPS is up about 14%. Um, I had a theory, and it seemed to pretty much rule out, and that was if it could fly on a 747, it did well. So we saw Apple actually do well. Um, and, of course, UPS uh, trying to get stuff around. Uh, because of the uh, continuing uh, cluster uh, fiasco at uh, Long Beach that doesn't seem to get resolved and no one really spending any time trying to get it resolved. Not sure what's there. On the downside for semiconductors, we got uh, CRUS down about 5.6%. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. Come on, Mr. Chart. Get up here. Come on, there we go. And uh, take a quick look at Cirrus. Logic. Um, you had kind of a big, long uh, butterfly set up here. You pulled back a little bit to where support should be. 
which is about 82 bucks. You kind of got back there today. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot going on here. This thing looks like an, it's in a bigger trading range. Let's take a look at untied parcel here, UPS. Um, and that is a definite breakout. You got volume. It looks good. And uh, the harder that uh, that uh, we push the supply chain, the more that we're going to need things like United Parcel, FedEx, uh, trying to get things there on time and paying up to do it. But uh, I don't think it should be anything of a surprise. The only surprise is that we've allowed uh, our elected leaders uh, to not fix the problems that they probably should have fixed long ago. But uh, eh, can't say much about that. 877 <laughs> uh, Anyway, uh, we got fun buying. Uh, we got a lot of that, I think, yesterday, price markup. Uh, kind of interesting not to see much of that follow through today. Uh, we'll see what the last 30 minutes of the day looks like. Uh, we were a little lower, so maybe this is just some consolidation. But, of course, by Thursday morning, we're really going to be out of the fun buying window. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the markup was huge this month. And we don't get a lot of sales, like uh, I mean, a lot of uh, purchases like we have today. But whatever is out there, uh, the rubes and the uh, RI, uh, IRAs are probably going to be paying top dollar for whatever stocks go in uh, their funds. Uh, as uh, what is it, Barnum and Bailey? Bailey said, uh, "Suckers uh, don't ever give a sucker an, an even break." But that's I think that of the IRAs and the funds, I always think about that since they all are stupid enough to buy at the exact same time. Don't you think they should just have uh, kind of a, a, a odd day or two or three sprinkled around the entire month instead of trying to figure out uh, all of them or 80 percent of them all buying at the same time? But uh, isn't that part of the plan, the master plan? Anyway, uh, not expecting a whole lot out of the market. As I said, uh, redemptions were actually fairly strong in both uh, December and January. So probably not a lot of cash there, but uh, I do suspect that uh, we're going to see that. Now, if we look at volumes in the market, ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, if I update this, we'll get them here, I suspect. We've got about 7.3 billion shares. Uh, volume's been falling about 500 million shares a day the last four days. So it's not like we're back up to those highs of up uh, uh, hitting 1820 billion shares a day. Uh, but uh, you know the the amount of uh, re uh, retail investors has been pretty high over the last four or five days. Generally, they tend to be wrong. Uh, but uh, how many people that were swearing that if the market bounced, they'd sell, actually sold? I don't think many people that. They still don't believe it. We'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On this day in 1982, the Intel 8026 processor is introduced in 6 and 8 megahertz versions. Wow. Talk about a speed demon. It was employed for the IBM PC AT, introduced in 1984, and then widely used in most PC AT compatible computers until the early 1990s. The 286, as it was known, most commonly paved the way for the PC and the wonderful math coprocessor. Uh, pretty amazing that we used uh, such stuff. But uh, eh, cutting edge at the time. Uh, now we're, what, 100 times faster than that? Is that right? Yeah. So, uh, 100 times? How about 1,000 times faster? Yeah. Uh, pretty big. Anyway, AMD after the bell tonight. Uh, it's all about how much they can ship. Uh, we'll see what uh, that is, but it's kind of a tough uh, question to ask. Somebody in the den was talking about Microsoft. Um, down on a little bit of volume uh, today, uh, 25 million shares so far, compared to 46 million shares on the upside. And maybe you get 33, 35 million shares at the end of the day. Uh, that certainly would be going back into a candle with uh, almost 50 million shares on the upside. Uh, the one thing you do have out here that you want to watch for is this double gap. Uh, we've uh, chronicled how many times those double caps do get uh, tested. Uh, if a regular gap is going to get tested, I suspect that a double gap is about four more times likely to be retested. And that sets you in there at about uh, 293, 295-ish area um but uh yeah could you pull back to that area and it would it do anything bad not really it would just be a bigger consolidation going off from that 276 low um nothing really changing in what they're doing and but uh, somebody brought up uh what about multiple compression and uh eh, could be a thing uh micron 
which was uh, one of the bigger companies out here, um, running into uh, a lot of uh, problems also, mostly with uh, just, you know, the whole chip shortage thing slowing everything down all around uh, the world. Um, you came back, you tested a gap. That gap high, uh, was uh, gapped higher back on uh, November 19th with uh, 47 million shares. You came in with half that. So you got a fairly decent low out here. The only problem I have is uh, if the whole market starts selling off again, uh, this will be it. And I would we went through all the stocks with massively shorted uh, short uh, sell numbers on the buy monthly uh, numbers from the exchanges. And I it's just they didn't do much. And that generally tells me something. Every other time when we pulled back, um, those highly shorted stocks did get run. Uh, but uh, that isn't it. I mean, even in gold, uh, which uh, MUX uh, is really highly shorted again, you got a little bit of bounce out here. You just don't have much in the way of volume on McEwen Mining. Um, you do have a nice looking bottom out here in this one, though. It did test that 80 cent low at four, uh, yeah, that had a little over 4 million shares back on December 15th with less than half the volume. So looking fairly good. You got a gap up today, but just, you know, what are you going to do? 1.2 million shares. So it doesn't look, doesn't look bad, but uh, highly shorted. Uh, but uh, eh, not a real run. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, question about NVIDIA. A um, little pullback. I suspect that, uh, you know, you look at the semis and everything else. It, it just This bounce so far, why it was sharp over a couple of days, doesn't generally the light bulb that burns twice as by, uh, bright turns uh, burns half as long, is the old saying. And, you know, you, you got higher today. The volume is about half of what it was yesterday. Um, you continue to have a lot of short sellers in it, um, short sellers in uh, – AMD. So if uh, they do have some good numbers, AMD probably going to rip uh, 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 the face off of some shorts. NVIDIA, kind of a high on that level, too. But even things like Apple, they continue to short the Jesus out of all day long, which I don't understand. Um, you go, you short weak stocks, not strong stocks for the most part. Uh, anyway, you got almost no volume today compared to yesterday. Uh, we're doing all about 50%, a little less than 50% of the volume we had yesterday in Apple. So not any kind of signal quite yet on that one. Um, got a question here about Spotify. Do I think the Joe Rogan thing is going to do anything? No. Um it was just a punching bag for the techno fascists who don't like free speech. And eh, my guess is that uh, we heard a little bit about it yesterday. My guess is we'll hear next to nothing about it today, maybe one or two mentions. And by this weekend, no one will remember about what it was all about anyway. But uh, certainly it wasn't about the truth, because if it was about the truth, then people probably would be looking another way. But uh, hey, if a doctor gets 17,000 people to say, uh, other doctors to uh, sign up with him, I probably want to hear what he has to say. I wonder what these people are so afraid of uh, for a doctor who's actual real doctor, practicing doctor, opposed to when they talk about 300 doctors, which were really 50 doctors, and a lot of the other people were just imbeciles along for the ride in news propaganda so yeah i don't think much happens uh, you got somebody talking his own book with uh uh trying to sell his uh high uh high fidelity uh system for audio which is really what uh i want to say neil simon but it didn't um was really pushing he only makes about 50 or 75 bucks a month people streaming his song, so it's not a lot of money. Almost nobody makes any money as far as the artists on Spotify. It's the first thing you need to know. 
the uh, labels will gobble up about 75% or 80% of it. And even then, they don't make that much money. So, you know, it was kind of a uh, not a big deal. But uh, if you had songs out in the, in the 60s, you have a different setup than you have if you came in after 1970. I think it's 1974 is the split uh, time where you uh, have to... Uh, opt into the big deal that everybody else opted into. But if you're before 1974, uh, a much different uh, scale for selling your music. But now, I mean, Spotify has its own problems, which is one of the reasons I don't face it. And it had its problems since it went public. But it's more about the structure than uh, the company itself. We'll be back in a Trading the markets, but having trouble finding like minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, Samuel, who asked, am I bullish or bearish? I'm kind of bearish, but not at the moment. I suspect that they're going to hold this market up at least uh, through Wednesday, if not Thursday, for fun buying. But I don't think there's a whole lot here. And, of course, any kind of bad news uh, could break this market wide apart. It, it is not that strong. Uh, as we went through a lot of those, nobody's really covering a lot of these highly shorted stocks. And they didn't really move very much uh, higher. 
yesterday. We've got a few stocks that are actually up a little bit today. But I think they're kind of just blips. There's not a lot of volume behind them, stuff like that. A lot of stocks that looked good about a month ago um, kind of failed. And we're still not get, seeing much of a, uh, a significant bounce out of it. Um, anyway, AT&T, uh, just a thought out here because I hear it every time the market pulls back, and that is I'm going to buy some company with a big dividend like AT&T, and they'll pay me to wait. Um, I've always found that story to be uh, something that just costs people loads of cash because uh, guess what? Uh, companies like AT&T, eh, you wanted your silly dividend. We're not giving it to you. Suck it. And, of course, it gaps down. And uh, not only have you lost your dividend, you've lost uh, some of the money of your equity, too. I just, when things get bad, they quit, uh, they cut the uh, dividends. And, I, it, you know, the whole idea of hiding in this stuff uh, doesn't ever seem to pan out, at least as far as I can see. But uh, another one out here when you look at it uh, of cutting dividends um, and uh, people thinking that they're sacrosanct, they are not. I uh, had uh, earnings from uh, NXPI. It kind of was all over the place in after hours, uh, doing a whole lot of nothing today. And, of course, uh, you got to think that if, uh, uh, if uh, all their business was uh, just smartphones, they would have probably done a lot better. Uh, but uh, really their problem is 50% of their business is cars, uh, automobile-related manufacturing and the cutback uh, and um, supply problems. And that led to, uh, you know, kind of a fairly decent pullback that, that uh, I don't think much else happens out here. Uh, automobile uh, manufacturing uh, and uh, supply chain crises have to get better before that's going to change. Uh, to, to, we looked at MU, uh, question about uh, PLTR. Um, I mean, this thing looked fairly good at around 17 bucks. Uh, as soon as it started to crack, I was out of it. Um, but, uh, you know, you've come back up here to 1437. Um, I don't think that there's much out here to bring up other than uh, this is one of those black box companies uh, that's going to have to produce some earnings fairly soon. Uh, question about the SMHs. We come out here and then the TLT. You had a nice bounce, uh, but it's kind of like two days. Uh, you got a lot of volume at the lows that has not been tested. So do you have a chance of uh, that retest of the 249.36 low? You do. But uh, I don't see anything other than very light volume and a little slightly higher high out here. But uh, we'll see. Again, probably a lot more about what AMD does tonight is it is a fairly big hunk of those SMHs. Uh, let's go back and look at the bonds. Uh, the Fed has not quit buying. Uh, they're slowing it down, though, a little bit. We are getting back into this gap back up from the 27th and starting to fill it. Uh, volume's just a little lighter out here. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to continue down. Now, remember, this is the month when they said that they're going to quit buying bonds. So I can't imagine that this thing goes up. Uh, at worst, or, I mean, at best, maybe it holds around this level. I think it's been working for a while to go back and test about 137 to 139. Uh, so we shall see. I think the Fed probably going to pull the Band-Aid off all at once, probably going to make it a little bit tougher through uh, March uh, for us to figure out when the uh, cork has been pulled out of the uh, uh, giant cask of free money. But uh, eh, continuing to be problematic. Uh, to, to, to Chris, okay. Question about workday. Um, this one actually had a fairly decent test of a seven, almost eight million share low. 
back at 220. That spike back on July 27th that had 7.7 7 million shares. You only had about uh, 2.4, is that right? Yeah, maybe 2.6 million shares. So <clears throat> there wasn't a lot, um, but I think you got the lion's share. Almost everything looks about like this on the uh, on the uh, uh, move higher, and that is uh, just you went a little higher today. Volume's fairly light. And a lot of these stocks, so yeah, it could easily pull back to 242. I think he could, um, or get a retest of the 223 back out here. But uh, you know, you had a lot of instant uh, short covering. Uh, this wasn't that bad, but uh, eh, I think most of the shorts are out. It's more about who will buy it now than something else. Uh, question about Adobe, a D B E. AD. If I can type it, we can. 877 Okay. Um, man, just like everything else out here, uh, this one rolling right into a gap lower. That gap was on the 5th of January. Ooh, ooh yeah. 5th of January, came down with 7.4 million shares in it today with 1.4 million shares. So, yeah, I think probably the easy money in Adobe is over, too. Uh, what else do we have out here? Question about uh, has the IBB finally bottomed? Um, I don't know. Everything looks about the same. The only difference is this hasn't hit resistance quite yet. You got a doji out here that could be the halfway move higher. Uh, if this opens up tomorrow higher, then I would say that that's probably the halfway move. So, yeah, could you get back up to 140, which is the top of this gap down from the 18th? You could. Uh, you got decent volume today, 2.7 million shares. So, not bad. Uh, could be worse, could be better. Uh, anything about the XMEs? Keep them coming. Path at TFNN.com. You had a nice gap higher in the metals today, uh, a lot of volume. Um, what I dislike is that you really didn't test the uh, previous low on lighter volume, but uh, good news is good news. Up uh, decent volume, I wouldn't say enough. You really want the kind of volume you had in the down candle. That was 8.8 million shares, got 5 million shares so far in the exit. We'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. here uh, i don't know what this symbol is here krbn uh global carbon strategy fund uh, that's interesting um uh, just going sideways just a big triangle pattern uh lower highs higher lows so and eh, carbon credits what a scam <laughs> but uh what can you say there's a sucker born every day uh, yeah, it could be a trade. It's also a scam. I mean, the company. Um, you know, it reminds me of I, I the theology class in high school. Uh, I wasn't Catholic, but uh, I thought it was absolutely insane that you could buy, what was it, uh, indulgences in the Catholic Church. So if you wanted to send all you, it was okay as long as you threw a bunch of money at them which I always thought was uh, kind of the exact same thing as this and just as stupid. But uh, that's me. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Do that. Okay. Uh, Netflix, NFLX. Uh, is uh, Einhorn buying this, uh, actually changing anything? And I think he just bought it for a trade. Uh, it was kind of a little oversold. Um, you're back up to one of the double gaps that existed. So the easy money's done here. Uh, I'm thinking maybe 470, 475 is probably where this thing's going to top out. But... Uh, you know, before this even came into earnings, I was very skeptical about it just on the fundamentals, which is 600 scripted shows now in English. Man, could you think about finding one that you even like just looking through the list, much less actually watching any of them? There is far too much content and there's far too much churn out here from one, you know, going from one uh, system to another system and uh, I don't know if you can say anything um, it did get through that little double gap which generally means you could go a little higher but I'm thinking 470 ish you could fill about three quarters of that gap down but uh, you got a high volume lows out here that really haven't been tested so you know my guess is that after it takes this bounce Einhorn takes its cash yeah, could you see a 360, 370-ish low out here for a retest on lighter volume again? Um, don't think that's a problem. And two, this isn't going to change in a hurry. Everything that they're paying for, all the movies, the scripts, the actors, um, it's becoming a bidding war for talent 
in Hollywood. If you want to know more about this, uh, there's a couple of uh, newspapers and magazines. One's called Variety. Uh, but uh, you can keep an eye on it. I'm not a big fan of ever being in this business, mostly because I was around it. And I know that eventually just about everybody in it goes bankrupt. Uh, so it hadn't been it. Far away eyes. Uh... <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 877-927-6648. Get back to some of the other emails in here. Da, 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 okay. And we answered that. Uh, okay. Those taken care of. Okay. What else do we want to look at out here? Okay. With uh, earnings coming up on D.H. Horton, what do you think? Is the high in? And I think, uh, yeah, you can easily say that. You got a high volume low that spiked through the previous low. Now you're back up of it again. But uh, higher interest rates are never going to help housing. Um, is it the end? No. Could you go sideways? Could they do a little bit better? There is kind of that um, kind of uh, anomaly in housing where when everybody sees interest rates actually going up, it does, for a little while, kind of push sales. So could they still do well enough to hold the price? They could. I don't know what they're going to say. Um, long term, though, if people start asking their opinions and interest rates are a percent or two higher, I think that's just the death knell for any of these. But that's it. Far away eyes. Okay. Uh, to, to, what else do we have? Waste management. Wasn't, uh, wasn't the Sopranos in waste management? I think that was a big deal. They've come off their highs back in retested low, again with higher volume. So there's a lot of stocks out here that really need to retest these lows, or at least retest them on lighter volume. So you've got to bounce out here. This one didn't get that high. Uh, and you're going into earnings, which is never a good sign. To, to, to what else do we have um, on Friday? Uh, question uh, the biotechs. How are these things going to do? Um, uh, that's Friday, right? That's that. That's this Friday. Uh, Bristol Myers Squibb. Man, they are really doing everything they can to push these vaccines again, even to two-year-olds, which uh, if you believe the data, they're five times more likely to die in a car accident. So it's not something that has a high priority. Not exactly sure why they're trying to push vaccine on kids. But, uh, you know, I think that a lot of this is going to probably switch. Um, I don't think a lot of parents want their three-year-old inoculated for something that's not going to really hurt them. And whatever the chance is, it's much higher than uh, than what's going to happen either way. But, uh, now nah, I think this whole thing seems to be rather burned out. I would love to see, I mean, it's up there. Uh, it's not backing off. It's not like a lot of these other ones. So maybe there's some more to Bristol Myers Squibb than I think about. <laughs> yep it is okay uh anything else uh also regeneron uh as we look at the uh, vast industrial vaccine complex uh, man it's just going sideways out here on this one isn't it this is very interesting it's building steam for something Generally, you get some fairly big moves out of the ones that are this tightly wrapped going into earnings. But uh, <laughs> I question everything. What's less that? Uh, yeah, Neil Young. Southern man doesn't need him around anyhow. We'll be back in a minute.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get ready to the, uh, in the uh, show, uh, kind of this quiet day, as I said, uh, kind of waiting for earnings here. I think we've kind of got the markup for uh, fund buying in. Uh, probably going to meander around for a couple of days uh, when fund buying's off. off. Uh, probably on Thursday, I think we're probably going to have a much better view of what really lies beneath this. I am fairly bearish, um, but uh, we haven't gotten any signal that says pull the ripcord quite yet. But uh, just about everything, including this one, we have a uh, request to look at STEM, S-T-E-M. All this stuff has high volume lows. We're back up on lighter volume today. Now, do we actually have to go down there and hit 1042 on it? No, but I think you're probably going to get a lot, at least 50% retraces in a lot of these. Uh, so I don't see any reason to be buying anything here right now. Um, if you're long stuff, you got the bounce. I think you just put in a trailing stop and let the trailing stop take you out. I don't think you decide that. Uh, uh, this market can't turn around uh, on you in a New York second and uh, come after you. But uh, right now, we're waiting on earnings after the bell and tomorrow morning. A um, little hard to, to actually tell because it's all about how much could someone manufacture. And that one's kind of a hard one to actually say. Uh, if you've got a company that can sell everything it makes, you always have to wonder. 
But, um, you know, you've got a, a fairly decent discount in some of these, like NVIDIA and AMD, based on Intel coming out and talking about basically the equivalent of price wars. We haven't looked at uh, Intel here today. The big thing would be whether or not uh, AMD in the commentary tonight talks about uh, reacting uh, to uh, Intel's desktop stuff and video cards being uh, aggressively priced. I don't know about it. Um, not a lot of volume today, but uh, kind of just hanging out at the 49 level. So when you can, not when you have to, we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.